Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Germany once again and we're going to go to the Franconia region in northern Bavaria to be specific. And this is yet another beer that was given to me by my very good friend Daniel, who as I've told you many a time, was the one that first got me into beer with the Bamberg Rauch beers. For this review, we're going to have a taste of a Keller beer, which is one of his favourite beer styles. And this is a brewery that from what I gather is pretty highly regarded actually in this Franconia region. So I'm really curious to see how this turns out. He's never pointed me in the direction of a bad beer yet. So for this one, we are going to go to Brauerei Wagner Merkendorf, and we're going to have a look at their um, 815 Jubiläums beer, which comes in at 5.5%, and as I mentioned earlier, it is a Keller beer. So really curious to see how this turns out. A Keller beer, incidentally, uh, the Keller beer and the Zwickel are the ones that are related. The Zwickel is one that's not quite as hoppy and not quite as strong from what I remember, but you Usually when it comes to the Keller beers, they are a little bit stronger in alcohol from what I remember, like by 0.5% or so. They're a little bit more yeasty, they're nattertrupe, they're unfiltered, and I remember them also being a little bit more hoppy as well. But I think really, <coughs> pardon me, it depends on which brewery as you get them from. But I, from what I do understand, this is a style that really kind of found its origins in uh, Bavaria. So really looking forward to trying this one, and as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Brauerei Wagner Merkendorf. They do have 10 or so different types of beer that are produced regularly. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Brauerei Wagner Merkendorf and I will say about this and um, these breweries in northern Bavaria in the Franconia region sometimes it's very very difficult to find information on them so if any of you watching from there no good sources of information do please post the links in the uh, description below or send them to me on Facebook or something like this but anyway to tell you a little bit about Brauerei Wagner Merkendorf so this brewery as the name suggests can be found in the small village of Merkendorf in Franconia which has only around 3,000 inhabitants but it's got a very pretty castle with a moat around it in the middle from the photos I was looking at but you can find this city to the southwest of Nuremberg and it's part of the Ansbach uh, municipal Palatality. But um, the brewery origins apparently trace back to 1797 and basically this is another one of these breweries that's passed down the different generations of the family ever since. Today the beer production is uh, looked after by Gunther and Raina Wagner and they're quite highly regarded for the quality of their beer and in particular it's the Ungesbundes um, Lager beer that these guys are really kind of famed for. So hopefully that's one that I can uh, review for you at some point in the, the fairly near future. But their brewery itself is on the outskirts of the village it looks like it's basically a kind of industrial unit brewery that they have but they also have a restaurant which is in the centre of town and in the summer they open up the beer garden at the back of the property as well. As I mentioned earlier they've currently got 10 different types of beer. They've got a red beer, they had a Helles, a Dunkel, a Weiss beer uh, and a few other kind of traditional types of beer as well. So these guys are brewing uh, all the kind of traditional German beer styles that you would want. But that's all I was really able to find information wise about this brewery. If you want to learn a little bit more about them of course you can check out the brewery website in the description below but like I say you're only going to see the kind of food menus and things like that. Incidentally their, uh, their brow house if you like, their, uh, their pub serves all the kind of traditional German foods. It has you know herring in there, there's a load of different pork things and goose and stuff like that. So definitely somewhere to have a little look at if you find yourself in the Ansbach region. But um, yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. This one as the name kind of suggests, I don't know how fluent you all are in German, but it's basically this beer was brewed um, for the 850th anniversary of the town of Merkendorf. So yeah, um, this of course 
RW actually stands for Richard Wagner, who I'm not sure if he is still the big boss of the company, but it mentions one of their beers, their Dunkel beer that they have was actually brewed for his 75th birthday. So he might be like the big boss of the company. And then it's his, I'm guessing Gunther and Reiner might be his uh, sons, of course. But there you can see, there is the, uh, the bottle cap on this one, which is that same symbol I just showed you on the back here. And you can see the address for this brewery is Pointsklasse 1 in uh, Merkendorf. So, um, yeah, 0 0.5 litres, this one, a half litre beer. So let's get it out and into the glass and just see how we get on. And it actually says here, yeah, there's the little thing I was telling you about as well. Brew, uh, starting, origin starting from 1797. So, one of the older breweries actually that you'll come across, I think, but not the oldest in, uh, in Franconia. There are a few of them. A lot of them seem to have started up around, um, you know, the time of the the unification of Germany under Bismarck and things like that. But there you can see, nice little bit of smoke on the opening, and we'll get it out and into the glass. I'll tell you something, you smell some of these lovely German malts right away. Look at that. This looks good. Let's just leave it. That's about half of it in the glass just now. Unfortunately, I didn't have a... Um I didn't have a, a half liter uh, stein for this. I only had my my Mikeler one that I had, my Mikera one from uh, from Copenhagen. So um, yeah, this is the one that we're going to go with for this. So it's zero point three liters, but it is the right type of glassware. Germans are very sensitive about what type of glassware you use for their beers. So as you can see with this one, it's poured a nice kind of golden amber colour this beer. You can see there was about two fingers of a frothy head on this one, but like I say, we've only got about 250 mils in this one. You can see, um, normally these Keller beers would be a little bit hazy, but you can see the um, the sediment kind of floating around in this one a little bit. So maybe I've chilled this beer just a little bit too much in the fridge, but I did let it back. I did let it sit for a wee while to kind of just warm up a little bit to sort of Keller temperature, because the fridge obviously is about four or five degrees, and uh, I let it kind of warm up to about seven or eight, which is normally, I think, what you would serve these beers at in Germany. Um, but yeah, nice looking beer this one. In terms of its appearance, not overly surprising for the style, um, but yeah, a nice kind of rich, goldeny, very slightly amber colour this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. So pretty much what you would expect. Incidentally, the head is, it's a kind of creamy colour the head on this one rather than being perfect white. But um, yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. So let's take a closer look at that aroma and just see how we got on with this one. Ooh, that's nice. So yeah, as you would expect from this style, in terms of its aroma, it comes across as definitely being more malty and more kind of yeasty if you like. So you've got that nice, smooth, white, white German bready quality to the beer. I always loved the uh, German bakers when I was living in Heidelberg and you really pick up that lovely kind of bready quality coming out of this one. I really like it. So you can pick that up, you know, those nice smooth, I would be guessing it's Weirman malts that these guys would use because it, sm it certainly smells like it, but you can definitely pick up that nice white bready smoothness to the base of the beer. There's a little bit of a biscuity quality coming out of this one and it almost comes across as being a little bit like bread crust, like uh, you know it's almost like a slightly, it's not really toasty but it comes across very similar to the bread crust that you'll get on a lot of these kind of German handmade loaves and things like that. But um, yeah, nice little touch of a biscuity quality to this one or I, don't, I never know whether with German reviews whether to say cookie or biscuit, I never know whether the Germans are more familiar with you know British English or um, or American English but yeah it definitely has a little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness to it which is nice. Um, maybe little hints of um, kind of almost a slightly woody quality to this one as well which is nice but you've got those typical um, noble hoppy qualities in there as well. I mean, you've got a nice little touch of that earthiness in there. It'll be Hallertau or Tittenanger hops, I'm sure, that they've used in this. But you've got a nice little bit of a Hallertau. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure it'll be the Hallertau. The Hallertau ones are from Bavaria. But you've got that nice little bit of that noble earthiness in there. I always find the German earthiness just a little bit sweet. Um, you also get some nice kind of floral aromatic qualities for me and to me this beer actually really does lean a little bit more towards the floral side of things in terms of the green side of the hops. You've got a little bit of the lighter grassiness that you'd expect of course from them as well and in terms of fruitiness um, yeah for me in terms of fruitiness you do have a little bit of a kind of there is almost a little bit of a kind of peary ester coming out of this one, but really it's kind of, it is really just like a kind of straight up grassy, almost very slightly lemony fruit that's coming out of this one, but I would say it leans more towards that peary 
almost very slightly apple ester, kind of orchardy ester coming out of the beer of this one, but to me this one definitely comes across as more malty generally in the aroma, but it does have a good little bit of a floral character from the hops as well, but um, overall the aroma of this beer is um, is really quite nice I have to say, so, um, so yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma for yourself before you get stuck into the beer. So let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we got on. This one is the Axenhundert Funfsen um, sorry, not the Axen, the 800 Fünfsen Jahr uh, Jubiläums beer from Brauerei Wagner Merkendorf in Franconia in Germany. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull, prost. Ooh, that's really nice actually. That's, uh, that's a pretty solid beer, I have to say. So, it kind of, it hits the, everything you would want. From um, from a Keller beer, I have to say it's it's got a nice bit of more malty kind of bready yeasty quality out of it, and that's exactly what you want. Now, don't when I'm saying yeasty, don't get confused with that when you know the the kind of yeasty qualities we often talk about with um, with Belgian beers and stuff like this. Of course, and um, the German yeastiness is a little bit different. It does almost come across as being a little bit more kind of biscuity and things like that. But yeah, this is nice, like I really, I like how everything goes together in this one. So, um, where to start with this then? So, you're going to feel the middle of your palate just kind of blanketing the, uh, you, you're going to feel that sort of bready quality just blanket in the middle of your palate. Um, and it's it, that just forms the whole kind of linchpin of the beer, if you like. Um, you can feel that, you can actually feel with this one, oddly enough, that it is a little bit more kind of, boozy and alcohol, it almost comes across, it almost reminds me of some of these uh, Maybach beers in some way, this one actually, but I do like how this whole thing goes together. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say with this one, it definitely has a little bit more of that kind of malty Maybachish character, which is good. But we'll just top it up. Should have drunk a little bit more of it, right enough. But yeah, so as the kind of flavour of this beer evolves a little bit, you are going to have a little bit of a. You will notice some kind of grainy qualities come out of this one. So, like I say, it starts off with that nice, smooth, white, bready quality, and then it just. It, it's almost like the middle of your palate just fills up a little bit, and you start to get more of the. Um, the kind of grainy side of the beer too. When you move further into the aftertaste, you start to get this very slightly woody flavour out of it. There's a little bit of a graininess in there too. In the very centre of your palate, you've got a little bit of a caramel, and it almost comes across as being a little bit toasty, to be honest with you. And when you move out from the centre of your palate there, that's when you start to get the more um, kind of grainy, biscuity notes out of this one. But yeah, I like, I really like how that malt base kind of goes together in this one and you can feel the slightly bigger presence in the yeast in this one and it's coming across in that, just that bready quality that the beer has. The hops on this one are pretty much what you would expect. Um, so back corners of the palate, definitely a little bit of that nice noble earthiness there. As you come further forward along the sides of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of a floral aromaticity. And it's actually, it's, it, I wonder, they might have used Hercules or something in that here, because this beer does come across a little bit bitter compared to uh, to some of the other um, to some of the other Keller beers that I've come across, actually. So maybe they are using a hop in here like Hercules or Pearl or something that's, um, that's a little bit higher in alpha acid content. If I remember, Hallertown and Titnanger are usually about 5.5, whereas Pearl and... Um, Pearl and Hercules are sort of six and a half. I think Hercules might actually be up at seven. So um, yeah, I wonder about that with this beer actually. But yeah, that's good how that goes together. I really like that about this beer. So nice floral aromaticity there on the sides, on the front corners of the palate. Then round the very front curve of the tongue, you've got a little bit of that lighter sort of grassy quality to the beer as well. Behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity um, esters start to come out of the beer. And again, this one's kind of what you would expect from the aroma. There is a little bit of that kind of 
um, sort of pear-y, very slightly apple-y ester. I would say it leans more towards the pear-y side of things. And then on the very kind of tip of the tongue, that's when it leans towards that more kind of grassy quality, if that makes sense. It definitely leans a little bit more towards that kind of typical noble grassy element that you get from German beers, if you like. But overall, I think this is a really, really nice Keller beer, this one. It's definitely got the slightly higher alcohol thing you want on it. Um, I would say it's got the yeastiness that you expect. It's also got a little bit more of that hoppiness that you'd expect. For me, the slightly, sweet, the slightly more... It, it leans a little bit more towards that kind of biscuity, caramelly side of thing, and it almost has a little bit of a Maybach quality to it as well, which is uh, which is kind of interesting actually. So, uh, for me, that's an interesting point to make about this beer. If I was blind tasting this, I would probably think that it was maybe like a, a Maybach or something like that actually, rather than a Keller beer. Um, so yeah, that's uh, yeah definitely an interesting point to make about this one. But the main question for me is whether it's a good beer or not, and it def and when I say that thing about the style. That doesn't take away the fact from it being a Keller beer. I just think it has a, a bit of my bulk quality to it. But um, in terms of it being a good beer, it certainly is. And I wouldn't hesitate to drink that again. I really quite like this one, actually. So big thumbs up to Brauerei Wagner Merkendorf for this beer. So yeah, if you get the chance to try this one, have a go at it. I do hope I can have a look at their... Uh, uh, Unge Sprinteris I uh, Lager beer at some point because, like I say, that is the one that they're uh, they're supposed to be famed for. They've got a nice Dunkel as well. I always love German Dunkels, and um, they've got a few. They've got a red beer as well that I think would be quite interesting actually. So, um, in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, then I would say. Yeah, for me. This beer comes across as being fairly mid-bodied, and um, carbonation is very smooth. As I always say, it has that typical Brauhaus smoothness to it that you get from the German beers, although the Germans that are watching the video probably laugh at me saying that, but I always find German beer to be very, very smooth. Um, overall, with the mouthfeel, this one is a little bit oily. I do like that oily side that it has, but it does have a little bit of that crispness you expect, particularly... It's almost kind of crisp on the front of the palate, but then a little bit more oily on the, the back side of the palate. In terms of hoppy bitterness, I think we're talking about 25, maybe 30 IBUs at a push for this beer. It does have that little bit of hoppy kick to it that you would want from a Keller beer, as I mentioned. The malt base is nice and smooth, but also sweet. It becomes sweeter in the aftertaste as well. You do get the beer starting to lean more towards the sweeter side of things later on. Um, and you've also got a nice little bit of a fruity quality to this one as well. But overall, a really, really solid Keller beer for me, with a little bit of a Maybach uh, leaning, to, uh, leaning to it, in my opinion. I do think, I, I still think that about this beer. If I blind tasted it, I might say it was a Maybach. Um, but it does have the, some of the characteristics you would expect of the uh, the Keller beer as well. So I really like this one, actually. I wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. And do give me some other Keller beer recommendations in the comments below as well, because this is a style that I always enjoy uh, enjoy trying. And with this one, you can detect it's just that little bit more boozy as well. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. I've really enjoyed reviewing this beer for you. I always enjoy reviewing these... Uh, Franconian beers in particular the and you know German traditional beers where my whole love of beer began so I always enjoy making these videos for you so thank you again to Daniel for giving me this beer as well and um, I'm sure hopefully I'll be able to review a few more of the beers from this brewery at some point in the future so um, yeah let's leave it at that then this one was the 815 Jahre Jubiläumsbeer from Brauerei Wagner Merkendorf in Merkendorf, uh, which is part of the Ansbach municipality near Nuremberg in Franconia in Germany. It'd been cool to visit another uh, Franconian brewery for you, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Brauerei Wagner Merkendorf as well, and I'm sure I'll review some more from this brewery at some point in the future, because I have certainly enjoyed this one. Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Slanja, Skull, Prost.